Hey everybody, Sam here and Angela and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to the inside of our Palm Harbor single wide mobile home. In the last video of this series you guys saw us unpack and assemble our fireplace, Angela's fireplace if we're being <laughs> honest. Today's video is a great one. It is full of tons of education and information and that is actually piping, connecting, and hooking up the fireplace. And maybe even lighting it. Oh yeah, we can't not light it. <laughs> Let's go. I think it's safe to say I'm already enjoying having a truck, especially with the top on it, because I'm able to put things in here and they stay nice and dry. That's heavier than I thought. So we have our propane tank full, ready to get it into its spot. This is what's known as a 100 pound propane tank but it weighs more than 100 pounds. We also have a 16 by 16 patio paver stepping stone. We're gonna put it down and then sit the tank on top of it so that it gives it a nice firm base and this doesn't sink in the mud or move around with the ground with rainwater or just general usage. With our tank set, we are done with our part. It's time for the gas pro to come over, aka my brother, and let him start educating us and showing us, and let's really start to install the gas pipes next. We're at the point where we are ready to go ahead and drill a hole through our floor in the living room. We found the center point of the wall. We then marked the center point of the fireplace, turned around, looked at the back, and decided that we wanted to space the pipe penetration through the floor 10 inches off that center point. We made sure it was out of the way of any connections, any kind of switches and everything on the back of the fireplace so that we don't end up putting ourselves in a pickle later on. I have a Forstner bit that I'm ready to go ahead and drill from the top to the bottom. I'll go through our finished floor, through our subfloor, into the underbelly of the home, at which time I'll use this fiberglass rod, stab it straight down through the underbelly of our home and have it sticking down there so we can see where to run the copper tubing in the crawl space. This is a pop cutter, rigid brand. Rigid's kind of the staple in the industry. They make really good tools. This one's been around a while. I bought this second hand. Uh, I, I don't know if you can break one. The cutting wheel's replaceable. The roller's replaceable. You just got these pins to knock out and you can replace them if you break one. And if you use enough, you will break a wheel. But this is it. This will do up to two inch pipe. Just like cutting a piece of copper with a smaller cutter, this is just a larger cutter. Just go a quarter of a turn each time around. That's it. This here is a rigid 700. This is a staple in the industry as far as thread and pop. Um, they call these a power pony and that's what I use. They're tough. They can pick me off the ground if it hangs up. So. You want to be careful but it's perfect for thread and pipe and once again it's kind of the staple in the industry the go-to the rigid 700 this is half inch you got to have a separate die head for each diameter of pipe that you're going through it
you always wrap your thread tape uh, in the same direction that you're going to screw your fitting. So this would be clockwise. You wrap your thread tape clockwise because that's the way we're going to screw this fitting. And I like to leave the very first thread or two open. So I get my fitting started in there nice and easy. And then it just works good. You want that thread tape to be seated, seated tight. I always follow up with a good pipe dope. Like I said, this is just, you know, and, and you can just use pipe dope, a good pipe Teflon paste, and not use the thread tape, but I always do both, um, especially for new construction piping, because that's just extra insurance. It makes it go together very well. So this T is going inside underneath Sam and Angela's house. And this little nipple and a cap, this is what's called a sediment trap. I call them a drip leg. And what this is going to do when the gas is flowing, uh, it's going to hit this tee and anything, any trash that could be in the propane, any extra distillate, any, anything will fall down in here. And it'll just kind of hang out in this little cap instead of going through and coming up through the orifice at the fireplace. So I'm putting it in just inside um, off the tank. So anytime you put black iron through masonry, you want to sleeve it. And um, you can use anything to sleeve it. The whole purpose of it is to prevent the masonry from touching the black iron. So in this case, from our brother's pipe, you know, we painted it. But I've also wrapped it with this 10 mil tape. Um, it's 10 mil thick. It's actually made for a pipe wrap. So it'll work in this instance. It will keep a barrier from the masonry and black iron touching. That's all you're doing. Because when they touch, there's a, a difference of material there and it can cause your pipe to rust faster. Now black iron will always rust. You know, surface rust is fine. But um, it'll rust a lot faster if it's touching the masonry. So you want to sleeve it. And this is what we used in his case because we had a tight hole. And it's just a small piece, but we wrapped it with 10 mil Christie's tape. And you want to overlap this at least a half inch on your wraps. But this will... this will be a really tough watertight sleeve between the black iron and the masonry. We're using this appliance connector um, on the tank here because it's flexible and Sam's going to have to take this tank loose to get it filled up because this is a hundred pound cylinder. This is one that he can uh, maneuver in his truck easily, take it to wherever he wants and get it filled up. So for a single appliance, like a fireplace is what they're going to have here. This is a perfect little setup. This should last a good while using their unvented gas logs and this is something that he can control. When he runs out of gas, he can go grab it wherever he wants. Um, he's not committed to just one company and their rate. So on a single appliance install, this might be something you can consider. You can buy the tank yourself. You can take it and have it filled. It's pretty easy to manage. So we're utilizing what's called a flare connection. So a flare connection is permitted per gas. It's actually a really good connection. And so on these brass fittings here, what makes the seal is inside this tubing is actually flared out and this fitting has actually got a bevel to it it's got a little lip bevel so when you tighten this up they squeeze together and create a gas tight seal you don't need to put thread tape dope anything on these threads you never want to do that because you don't want to take anything that will create any kind of 
barrier between the flare on the tubing to the flare on the fitting. Another thing while we're here at the tank, this is, the, this is a dual stage regulator that will screw directly into his tank. So this is a first stage and this is the second stage. This first stage right here cuts it down from tank pressure, which is pretty high, down to a lower pressure. And this second stage regulator turns it down from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. So inside the house, it's going to be about 10 inches water column, which that's what LP runs on. Your gas appliances inside, they're wanting 10 inches water column. So this regulator knocks it down to 10 inches. Another note on this appliance connector I'm using, this is what they call half inch, okay? And this is a 24 inch connector. These connectors have tags on them. These tags are not just to say who made it. This tag is giving you information. This connector will tell you on the chart what this connector will flow as far as BTUs. BTU stands for British Thermal Unit. This is a half inch connector, it's 24 inches long. This connector will flow 164,200 BTUs. Sam is gonna have less than 40 BTUs on that fireplace, so he's got plenty of volume. If he wants to add something later on, no, no need to change this out. We're good up to 164,000. We interrupt this install to bring you a little promo here. This is my nephew Jack. He's helping with the install, helping my brother Adam, who's his dad. He's just kind of off camera and running gun. You also have a YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Well, tell us about it. Uh, it is a film based YouTube channel. We make short films and fan films and featured films. Cool. Also, do some stop motion photography yes. stuff. Very different from what I do, very creative. So, there'll be a link to his channel down below if you want to check it out as well. If nothing else, stop by and say, hey, yeah. whatever. Give him a thumbs up. Check it out. Yeah. All right, let's get back to work. Yeah, that's the go. We're going to talk copper tubing for gas lines. So you've basically got uh, a few options. You can't just put any kind of copper in. This copper tubing that my brother has bought, um, this is a, it's got a polyethylene cover to it. It's a pretty thick jacket. Comes in real handy as just extra protection. So you can actually pass through something and this will act as a sleeve if you're going through masonry, um, something like that. This is just a little bit tougher. This is a direct berry copper, which copper is a, is a pipe you can put in the ground. It's not gonna rust in two, but having this on there really helps when you're direct burying it for rocks and things that could come in contact with it. It just protects the copper. Uh, also, it's yellow as yellow is the color for gas. Uh, the international accepted color for gas as blue is accepted for water um, something like that so this type of copper is refrigeration so this is the ACR copper it is rated to flow gas through it um, it's a very good quality copper it's a thick wall copper it's very similar in thickness to the type L which type L is another copper that's rated for gas and if you're gonna have to do a lot of bending and flexing with your with your copper tubing, I recommend a Type L soft. So all your tubings will come in a, in a soft and hard, except for your refrigeration. Your refrigeration, this is a hard line copper tubing. So this is very rigid, very stiff, very thick walled. You can bend it. As you can see, this is a circle, it's been bent, but you can't really fine tune it. And this is tough stuff to bend. This is real sturdy if you're gonna go a straight run like we're doing for Sam, where we're doing a straight run under his house. This is perfect application for that. So if you want to do a little more finesse, I would recommend a Type L soft copper tubing. A Type L or a Type K is acceptable for gas as well. So copper tubing, excellent choice for gas. You do want to make sure you size the right diameter tubing in relation to your BTUs in relation to the length of run. So that's a separate calculation and it'll be for each instance. You just want to make sure that your tubing will flow, the BTUs it needs to flow for the distance that it's got to go. This coating's really good. I mean, it's pretty good thick coating. It really helps to protect your pipe. That's at least 10 mil. That's a real good, that's a real good pipe.
hope it's a little motivation. Make sure you get good grades in school. And uh, if you don't want to crawl around in the crawl space, get a really good job making lots of money sitting behind a desk. You can make good money doing a trade too. It's just back breaking, sweaty, and dirty. But I do enjoy it. Golly, bum, people. That's that ridiculous. That was a little overkill. Okay, so we are at the end point here on the gas line. It went really good. Everything went super smooth. Everything went together really good. Um, I've been doing it for a while and I know how to kind of feel as I'm tightening everything and seeing the flare and making sure it's flared right and the nut feels good and everything feels kosher. But hey, it ain't up to me. It's up to this. And this is a pressure test. This is how we're gonna test to make sure the integrity of the pipeline, that there's no leaks, because uh, I need my brother around and my, my little nephews and um, Angela. So we're going to pressurize this test and we're going to do a leak test. Code requires leak test to be one and a half times the operating pressure, minimum of three PSI for a minimum of 10 minutes. So this is 10 inch water column. That's just a little bit higher than a quarter of an inch pounds of pressure. That's all he's ever going to have on his pipe when he turns his tank on and he fires his logs up. Just a little over a quarter of a pound. So I'm going to go ahead and test this at five pounds. So that's way higher than he'll ever have on his pipeline. We'll test it for five pounds for 10 minutes, make sure there's no leaks, and then we're good to go. Okay, so we did the pressure test for 10 minutes, um, actually a little longer, and didn't move a muscle. So we must have done something good under there. Everything went right. Pressure test passed, five PSI for 10 minutes. And so now we're gonna take it loose and finish up the connection and show you these logs.
Well, how do you like it? How do you like your fireplace? Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. And it gives such the feeling of warmth and coziness in here. Can't wait for cold mornings. I can just crank it up and go. I'm looking forward to the cold nights whenever I've been outside working or whatever and I come inside, crank it up and not go. <laughs> yeah, just watch it. That'll be really cool in the dark. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was pretty educational for you. I've really tried to let Adam talk and explain as much as he wanted to. There is a whole lot of information with gas piping, no doubt. And even though our install was fairly straightforward, just being propane, using the one kind of copper tubing, as you guys saw, there's still a lot of information there. So while it may look pretty finished, we still have some stuff we have to do to it. We did get a blower unit in that we have not put on yet. And we also have some touch up work that we need to do I mean, to get it fitted better. Yeah. And we have to mount our TV above it. So yeah. it will be coming, just not today. Well guys, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them for us down below. Otherwise, take care, and we'll see you next time on the homestead. See ya. <laughs> How'd that feel doing that backwards? I still did it, didn't I? Yeah, good job. You didn't say bye, though. Bye. We made sure to make sure. Make sure to make sure. If you got any questions or comments, leave them for us down below. I'll try to relay them. Relay them. Almost had it. Yeah. Gaspar on the scene here. Are you ready to catch this final connection? Mm -hmm. um, so it was awesome that my brother has a gas job. Obviously, that is a huge perk for us, and it was great. And hopefully, education. And hopefully, it's educational for you. Well, where were we going? Yeah. Bop, 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 bop. Well, you said he has a gas job too, so I don't oh. know if you want to. Whoops. This feels good to lay down. I'm tired. Does it pass inspection? Look good, kittens. Oh, it's a good place to poop. I'm Adam, Greenville Gas Pro. When you're ready for gas, I'm ready to bust my You didn't say bye, though. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, peanut gallery there behind the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get the TV. One last thing. Now the job's finished. Let's go eat.